Alright guys, so today I'm going to tell you how you can make a bridge function in this sort of way, to where your character can just freely walk under it without any interruption. Cannot even go this way, so even though it looks like they could. And then when they walk up here, onto the, uh, the level up here, the first or second level depending on where you live, now he can walk over the bridge. See? And he cannot escape the bridge if he wants to. Also, it works with touchscreen, so if you have a mouse or if you're on your uh, smartphone or anything, the bridge still functions as it should. Alright guys, so the first thing we're going to have to do is create some bridge events. Uh, this is going to be making the direct bridge itself, so we're just going to double click to make a new event. Uh, you can call it whatever, I'm just going to leave it as a blank event. And we're going to um, have it show the bridge. And I have no idea where it is, but it is in one of these, this one. Now, what we're going to do is also copy this and paste it again, but this time we're going to have an event here that is called Bridge is Above Player. So every bridge-related event we're going to make, uh, the bridge itself and uh, the barriers around it, uh, they're going to basically only have two pages. One is the blank page where um, basically this isn't true, and one is the page where it is true. So if the bridge is above the player, we need to make sure we set this above characters. Also you're going to want to set these to all parallel so just change them to parallel and uh, if the bridge isn't above players we're going to set it to below players so that it tells us the game is telling us that we're basically allowing the player to walk on the bridge because if the bridge is below we can walk on it which is kind of confusing to think about because if the bridge is down you're not you're going over it and if the bridge is up you're going under it see how that gets kind of confusing so I tried to label the switch here bridge is above player as clear as I could because if I just put bridge is above or bridge is up anything like that it would sound like oh the bridge is up we could walk across it no you walk under it so what we do is um, make sure with every event your first one here is the one where uh, the player can set foot on the bridge so we're just going to copy and paste that a few times. So in the first page of uh, a newly created event right here, we're going to have to have, it's just going to be an invisible wall uh, set to parallel. Oops. So if the bridge is, because on this page we have the bridge being below characters. So the bridge, the player is walking on the bridge at this point if uh, bridge is above is false. So what we're going to do is have this be the same as characters because if this is true right here, where um, the bridge is under the player or the character is walking over the bridge, we want to make sure they can't escape while they're on the sides right here. So that's why this first part here is same as character so that the character cannot uh, go past it. What we're going to do is copy this, this event, paste it, and then uh, have this run if the bridge um, is above player. In this case, what we're going to do is change priority to below characters. If it's below or above, it really doesn't matter. Or you could do same as characters and do through. It really doesn't matter how you do it. I'm just going to do below just because it's what I'm used to. So we're going to go ahead and copy and paste this um, along the areas of the bridge that the player should not be able to walk off the bridge. Next, we're going to make, just go ahead and paste one of these events here. But in this case, what's going to happen is you're, we're just going to flip these. So in the first page, have it below. In the second page, have it the same as. And then copy that and paste it there. What that does is it acts as um, an opposite of these six blocks. So if the character can walk under this, we don't want them to be able to walk where these are because it just doesn't make sense to do that. Likewise, if the character is on the bridge and they can't walk through these, we want them to be able to walk through those. Now, how are we going to get these things to switch back and forth? Well, I tried making an event at any choke point right here. And um, it just, when uh, I walk through it with the arrow keys or a controller or anything like that, it works fine. But when you use touch or click, it stops there. For some reason, it just, it just does. So I'll show you guys that right here. If I make an event right here where the player touches this event, uh, what's basically going to happen is we're going to have the bridges above player turn on and the reason why we have to place them here and not here is because the way I set up this bridge to function uh, the player cannot walk through these 
as they load the map because uh, by default these will be in the off position and they will be the same as character. So if they pass, if the character passes through one of these, they will then switch this turn to here and the player can walk through. So if we try this, we're doing our walk in, uh, the bridge seems to work fine, we can't escape, we can walk over here. Now as soon as I touch here, we should be able to walk under it. That's great. That's awesome. It works. And I didn't put a flip there so or a switch to undo that. So I can't really show you guys the rest of that. But if I just click over here, it just stops working. And that's that's very bad for touchscreen devices. So what I had to do was completely get rid of that. And we're going to have to create a, an event in wherever you create your... Um, on map events I usually pick the top left hand corner of my screen and we're gonna have it set to parallel and what this event is gonna do is keep track of the players X and Y coordinates you may already have a common event at the load of your at the very first load of your game to keep track of these but seeing as I'm just making one map right here I do not so I'm gonna use a control variable and I'm gonna call player X this will equal the players X the map the um, X coordinate on the map. Likewise, you just need to make one for Y. And you guys want to be careful uh, choosing map Y versus screen Y. Screen's the only thing you see on the screen at any given time, and map is the whole entire map, even if it's not shown on the screen. So make sure you choose map Y. So there we have that, keeping track of where the player is. Now what we're gonna have to do is create a series of conditional branches to check for the player's coordinates. So based on this map, we have y equals 9, y equals 8, x equal 8, x equal 14. And uh, we can use these numbers to um, help us figure out what to do when the player has a certain position on the map. If player y is equal to 8, we want to make sure that player x is also equal to 8 and 14 to make sure that the bridge is above is turned off, so right at these stairs. So what we're going to do is conditional branch variable player y is equal to 8. So that will make it so if the player is in this line, this horizontal grid right here. Now what we need to do is cut that grid up and get the 8 and the 14 out of there. So we only care about right here and right here. So to do that we can just copy this and paste and edit this to keep track of player x. And change well that's going to be the same right there because that happens to be coordinates 8 8 and we're going to also check for 14 so with these three conditional branches we can check if the player is on this, this set of stairs or this set of stairs if they happen to be on those sets of stairs make sure we turn bridge is above player off because then they will be allowed to walk over the bridge if they set foot on these stairs. And we're just going to copy and paste that right there. Now what we're going to do is copy this whole section, paste it down here, but change Y to 9. Whoops. And then make sure we have this set the um, bridges above player to on. What that does is uh, we have to pick an adjacent choke point so we make sure that the player can't get around this and ha mess with this bridge setup. So right here is an adjacent choke point and right here as well. But since we have the bridge becoming walkable here, it would make sense to make it non-walkable here. If we put it here, the player could just go around it and then it won't be able to go up. The player won't be able to go under the bridge. So at y equals 9, and then we have at x equals 8 and x equals 14. We're going to turn the bridge back on, which makes it so that the player can go under the bridge. Hit OK on that. And there's one more thing you have to keep track of. At the very start of the load of this map, what I'm going to want to do is set a parallel event to, um, based on where the player enters this map, change the function of this bridge. So if the player enters this map and is can just walk under the bridge at the very beginning. The way I have it set up is we're going to have to have a switch turn on. We're going to have to have the bridges above player switch turn on and then erase this event as soon as that happens. 
Because if the player walks in from down here, they're not stepping here to make sure that they can go under the bridge. The um, bridges above player funk, uh, switch is turned off, which means at the beginning of this map loading, the player can just walk right over the bridge. If we start the character here, the way I have this set up works fine because the only way the character can walk under the bridge successfully is if they pass the switch here and here that makes the bridge toggle itself to um, become above the player. So let's test this out, make sure it works. The player can go under it just fine. The player can go over it. Let's go ahead and check if the player can escape through the sides. Nope. And let's also see if we can click around. Yes. So this allows us to click and uh, use touch screens very, very easily without anything getting in the way. And it seems to work fine. But yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed and thanks for watching.